Hi folks, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Hope you're enjoying your Tuesday. It's April 16th, 2024. Here it is currently pouring down rain. I'm in South Dakota in case you're wondering. NASA has confirmed that a mystery object that wrecked havoc on a two-story Naples, Florida home on March 8th was in fact from the International Space Station. According to NASA, the object was a metal bracket used to attach discarded batteries onto a waste pallet. NASA was tracking the debris and notified people that they thought the debris would end up in the ocean, not on someone's home. The pallet was ejected from the space station in 2021. It was thought that the load would burn up completely upon entering Earth's atmosphere, but evidently it did. It beat all odds. The chunk of metal weighed almost 2 pounds, 1.6 pounds. It was about 4 inches long and approximately 1.5 inches wide. The homeowner, Ali Vando Otero, sorry, I'm getting all tongue-tied here, was away on vacation during the incident, but his son was home and Luckily, he was not injured. He was only two rooms away when it went through the two-story home. He cut his vacation short, arriving at home, only to find his ceilings in both floors, the roof, and flooring, and flooring damaged. Otero said that he was glad that no one was hurt. He originally posted some notes on Twitter, seeing how NASA was not responding to his emails. He posted one note that said, looks like those pieces missed Fort Myers and landed on my house in Naples, tore through the roof and went through two floors, almost hits my son. Can you please assist in getting NASA to connect with me? I've left messages and emails without a response. One of the best responses on Twitter for his post said that, um, I just want to say that you're the coolest dude. Who has ever survived a orbital bombardment by his own government. He could make claims for the damage either to his own insurance company or against the federal government under the Federal Tort Claims Act. Michelle Hanlon, executive director of the Center for Air and Space Law at the University of Mississippi, said that it gets more interesting if this material is discovered to be not originally from the United States. She said, if it is a human-made space object, which was launched into space by another country, which caused damage on Earth, that country would be absolutely liable for the homeowner for the damage it caused. It could be an issue in this case. The batteries were owned by NASA, but they were attached to a pallet structure launched by Japan's Space Agency. Originally, NASA at the Johnson Space Center in Houston said the Space Agency conducted a thorough debris analysis on the pallet and has deter determined it would harmlessly re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. It was by far the most massive object ever tossed overboard from the International Space Station. They didn't expect any portion of that structure to survive re-entry. However, research from other space experts do not match NASA's statement. The Aerospace Corporation, a federally funded research and development center, said a general rule of thumb is that 20 to 40 percent of the mass of a large object will reach the ground. The exact percentage depends on the design of the object, but these nickel hydrogen batteries were made of metals with relatively high density. I have an image here. It says March 2021. The International Space Station robotic arm released a cargo pallet with nine expended batteries. Because of lack of space and the size of the battery pallet, NASA decided to jettison the pallet on March 21st in order to free, free up um, room in the lab. 
Without any propulsion of their own, the batteries were adrift in orbit for three years until aerodynamics drag finally pulled the pallet back into the atmosphere on March 8th, almost exactly three years later. It is difficult to predict where a piece of space junk will re-enter in the atmosphere. The U.S. Space Command precisely tracks tens of thousands of objects in Earth's orbit. But the exact density of the upper atmosphere is still largely an unknown variable. Even a half day before re-entry, the U.S. Space Command estimate for where the battery pallet would fall to Earth had a wide window of uncertainty spanning six hours, enough time for the object to circle the planet four times. Falling debris has never killed anyone, according to ESA. The annual risk of an individual human being injured by space debris is less than one in 100 billion. But there are a few examples of damage. In 2003, a foot-long metal bracket from the doomed space shuttle Columbia smashed through the roof of a dentist's office in Texas. Fortunately for those who worked there, the Columbia accident happened on a Saturday when the office was closed. In Oklahoma, Lottie Williams was struck in the shoulder by a lightweight piece of material in 1997. Experts believe it was a re-entry of an upper stage of the Delta II rocket, and it was a glancing blow, and the air helped slow down the piece of debris, so she escaped injury. In 1969, a fragment from a Soviet spacecraft reportedly hit a small Japanese ship near the coast of Siberia, injuring five people. In 2020, a large Chinese long mock 5B rocket fell out of orbit in 2020 and created large damage to a village there on the western side of um, Africa. One of the most famous incidents of damage from space debris was in 1978, the re-entry of the Cosmos 954, a nuclear-powered Soviet military satellite. It landed in the remote northern area of Canada. That wreckage didn't hurt anybody, but the Canadian government organized a cleanup effort to recover as much radioactive debris as possible to guard, to guard against environmental impacts. There is a podcast that I found about this um, Soviet spy satellite that crashed there in Canada. It landed in an area, um, a hunting ground for the local natives. Um, you might want to listen to it. It's called Operation Morning Light and the effects it had on the environment even now from all the radiation. Chapter 1 is Finding the Debris, um, a huge hole. Um, chapter 2 goes into the war games and about the uh, satellite. Let's see. Um, and then it goes all the way down here to chapter 5 about the debris field and the effects on the environment and the people that have um, yeah, gotten cancer because of that. So devastating. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.